Hey, this is Steve with Dabble Lab, and in this video, I'm gonna walk through setting up an API endpoint that saves data to a database backend, and I'm gonna do that using Twilio Functions and Airtable as our data store on the backend. But before diving into it, this stuff changes pretty quickly, so please check the video description to make sure that there isn't an updated version of this tutorial. If you see a link to an updated version, click that link and stop watching this one so that you don't waste any time. Okay, with that, let's get back into it. We are going to go pretty quickly. It's uh, it's pretty straightforward. So first you need an account at uh, Twilio.com if you don't have one already. Once you have an account there, you want to go ahead and log in. And then if you hover over this all products and services menu here, you're going to want to find the runtime menu option down here under developer tools. And then that will take you to the runtime overview. And from here, you want to go to functions. And uh, Twilio functions are, um, they're referred to as serverless functions. So basically, it allows you to run code on a, uh, in an environment where you don't have to set up and manage the servers. It's really nice and super easy to use. So um, for starters, you would just click on the plus here. And there's some templates that you can start with. I'm going to just use this uh, JSON response template here and go create. And uh, the first thing that you want to do, you can give it a name that makes sense and set up the path. This is going to be the URL endpoint that we're going to hit. And I'm going to just call this example one. And uh, we'll just save it as is now so you can see this in action. And once you save your function, it you'll get this, it's been, it's deploying and then it'll say it's successfully deployed. There we go. And once it's successfully deployed, you can copy the endpoint and uh, test it out. And we'll start by doing that in a browser, but then we're going to do it with uh, Postman, which I'll talk about in just a second. So now when I post the endpoint in the browser, I get a response back that says get started true. And that response is being generated by the code here that um, is part of the function. So if you look in here, this response equals uh, get started equals true. And then this callback is just echoing back that or um, re returning back that response object there. So uh, pretty simple at this point. Our goal is to take in a post request and then save that to a backend data store. And our data store is going to be Airtable. So if you're not familiar with Airtable, it's a really cool service for building um, they call them bases, so database-driven uh, applications. It, it's pretty robust. There's, it, you can do a lot more than we're going to be looking at here. But uh, there's a, a free version. I'll leave a link also in the show notes that you can click on to come out here. But if you go to Airtable.com and sign up, you can start with the, uh, the, the free, um, free account. And we're going to add a base and... We're, I'm going to just start from scratch and I'm going to call this members like that. And when you create a blank base, it also creates a, a blank table called table one. And I'm going to rename this to members. And I'm going to change the column names here, the, the field names, uh, to something that is going to be better for what we're doing. So I'm going to use an ID or I'm going to call the first column ID and I'm going to use a an auto number for that and this is going to become our record identifier and that will just auto increment and um, I'm going to customize this and I'm going to call this name and just make this uh, single line text is all we need for that and then I'm going to change this attachments to um, email and there's an email column type that will just validate that it's an email address coming in here and I'll use that. And then I'm going to add a column called date and I'm going to use this to store a timestamp for when the record was added. And there's a date type and I'm going to toggle on this include the time and 12 hours is fine. And I'm going to toggle this on to um, keep the time as GMT or Greenwich Mean Time so that it's all consistent. And so now I've got my table. This is where I'm going to store the data that I'm going to be collecting through the uh, Twilio function. And so we'll, we'll leave that for right now and go um, back to the function. Actually, no, we won't go back to the function. I'm going to talk through how we're going to get from the function over here. And we're going to do that. Airtable has uh, an SDK for node 
JS and Twilio functions use Node. So this is all JavaScript or Node code. So we can use NPM modules in there. And the way that we're going to do that, we'll start over here. If you go to um, Airtable.com forward slash API, we've got really good documentation that makes it super easy to, uh, to work with um, the SDK or the node module. And you can do that on a base by base, I guess, basis. <laughs> so uh, I clicked on the base that we just set up, which is called members. And then if I click on the members table and go to create a record here, um, I actually get you can go to uh, curl or node node here. I actually get um, some example code that is exactly what I want. So I'm going to copy that. And this is what we're going to use in our Twilio function here. We're going to go like this. And this is using this NPM module uh, called Airtable. And I'll show you how to get that in just a second. But before I do that, the callback, I want to move that uh, because what I want, I don't want that callback to be called until after this create function finishes up. So I'm going to move the callback inside the, uh, the create function and make that the last thing that happens once the create function is done. And a, a couple of things that I need in here. So I need an API key uh, and also I need the, um, the, the values for the record that I'm going to be creating. We'll start with the API key here. So the API key you can get from Airtable. And if you go to um, hover over your little avatar there and go to account. And if you click on this here, I'm not going to do it because this is my live account, but it'll show you your API key and you want to copy that. And we can store the API key as an environment variable that is accessible in here. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Let me save this. And in the Twilio function, if you go to configure here, you can set up environment variables. And you do that by just clicking this um, uh, plus here under environment variables. And then you can give the environment variable a key name and a value. So I've set this up. I called mine Airtable underscore API underscore key. And then I pasted my API key right here. And that's what you would want to do in um, and using the NPM modules, that is in this dependency section down here. So you would click plus, and then you would enter in the name of the module that you want to use. In our case, it is the Airtable NPM module. So you just want to enter Airtable in there, and then the version of the module that you want to use. And I'm, as of the recording of this video, it's 0.5.8. I think if you leave that blank though, it'll just pull the latest version because this isn't required. So like mo moment here, I'm pretty sure that's how that works. So you can do that. And once you've done that, then you can go back to your function code, which we'll go to here and wire it up to use your API key. And the way that you're going to do that is through this context object here. So if you go to context, and then dot, you can see the environment variable. So the um, Airtable API key there, and that's what we want. And the only other thing that I need here is I need to pass in an object that is going to hold the values that I'm going to store in Airtable. So I'm going to create a, a new object called member. Um, and we're going to use that to store the values that are going to get saved. And so I'm going to create a, a property for each one of the column names that I want to have values for. So name, email, and date. So if I go over here and say name, I'm going to just hard code this for right now so we can test it out and then email. And then date, um, this I just, I'm going to use like a timestamp. Uh, let's see, why is it yelling at me? I forgot a comma. And need one there too. Okay, uh, so now I've got that. I don't need this, so i get rid of this. And I'm going to just echo back the... 
member details here. So let's see, we'll, if that looks right, we'll test this out and then we'll talk about getting actual values into it. So, um, so once this finishes deploying, we will test it. Only this time I'm gonna test using a, uh, an application called Postman, which is great for building APIs and, and testing API endpoints. You can get this, the URL is getpostman.com and it's available for Windows, uh, Mac and Linux. And you can um, use get request, post request, any HTTP request. I'm gonna just start with a, uh, a get request and I'm gonna send this and see if I get a response back. I do, and now I'm just gonna check to make sure that that made it into my Airtable, uh, which it did not. So, so we got something that's not right. Let's see what what's not right here. Airtable API key. Oh, all right. So I'm just passing an empty object here. I need to I need to pass in this object into the create function. So that's what's wrong. Save this and we'll test it again just to make sure that these hard coded values are making it into the air table deploying. Okay, so now that it's deployed, we'll test it again. Okay, we've got a response and let's see. Okay, so now this time we're we're good. We've got the the record going in there. But what I want to do is I want to post information to this endpoint and then have that information that's posted to the endpoint make it into Airtable. And so what I'm going to do is when um, when you're using Twilio functions, this object here, the event object, is going to carry parameters from the HTTP request that's made to the function. And so if you're doing like an HTTP post, it could be either values from uh, a JSON body, or if it's a get, it could be query string parameters. But we'll, let me, let me show you. Um, see, I'll say event.name and then um, event.email. And I'm going to save this here and then I'm going to go back to Postman and this time I'm going to do a post request. So go back here. I'm going to copy this because I'm going to use this as my body for the post and I'm going to change this to post. And um, over here, the, let's see, um, body, I'm going to just post the raw body. Uh, I don't need to post the date. I just need to post the name and uh, email and this is the data type is uh, JSON so I want to change that and just so we know that this is different go Joe and Joe test and let's try this out now so this time it's not doing a get request it's doing a post I'm going to send that And I get a response back, but let me just confirm that it made it into Airtable. There we go. So Joe and Joe test. So uh, everything is working as it should. And that is it for this tutorial, but a real quick recap. So what's happening now is I'm doing a post to this endpoint that is passing the information that I posted uh, into the function as part of this event object here. And then I'm using the values from that event object, these parameters specifically, the name and email parameters to populate this member object here, which I'm passing into the Airtable um, SDK, client SDK and the create function. And that's what's pushing it over to Airtable. And that is it. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments and I'll respond just as quickly as I can. If you did find the video helpful, please like it. And for more similar videos, you can go to youtube.com slash dabblelab. And there are over 120 other tutorials on uh, building uh, digital assistants and bots, Alexa skills uh, related kinds of things.
So um, let me know if you have any questions and thank you so much.